Windows machine here. We're going to do this project after examining the registry. This is really important, and the registry in Windows is really important. So the first thing we need to do is get a copy of the registry. And we're going to use FTK Imager. There are other ways to get registry information, but this is the main way you do it for forensic examination, where you get copies of the binary files. So um, let's, but first let's look at the Hive files to make it clear what's going on here. If I run regedit, this is Microsoft's main tool that you use to manipulate the registry. And this is something you don't want normal users going in here because you can easily trash your machine in here. However, um, if you, you have these long paths, computer, H key, local machine, system, current control set, control, hive list, you see here, these are the files the registry is stored in. It is fantastically complicated and illogical, which is the way Microsoft always does everything. Um, so the registry is consisting of all these files added together, and they're used in different ways as you boot up. So here's drivers. Here's the main ones. SAM security software and system and are the uh, main ones that carry information about the whole operating system that's used before you log in. And then when you log in, it figures out who you are and then goes to ntuser.dat, which is the one that has your personal settings that you've set there. Those are the five main files you use, system, software, security, and SAM, and ntuser.dat. There are others, but those are the ones that make the most important part of the registry for our purposes. You could, in principle, make a copy of the registry from inside regedit, but um, you don't normally do that. Um, what you do is you use FTK Imager or another forensic tool. And so I've installed FTK Imager on here. And here it is. All right. And again, this is not a perfect procedure. It would probably be better to run it from a USB stick without installing it. That would be a better way to do it. I found that difficult to do in the, in the uh, uh, virtual environment. So I did it by installing it. But installing it is a little bit sloppy because, of course, that changes the hard drive more than you need. Um, and you generally avoid installing tools when you're doing an examination in order to do as little damage to the evidence as possible. All right, so now we're going to go to File, Obtain Protected Files. Uh, file, Obtain Protected Files. Now um, we're going to get password recovery and all registry files. And notice, this is an entertaining box. FTK Imager is obtaining the system files from a live system and not the acquired image. Um, one of my instructors told me about a case he went to court where they accused a teacher of viewing pornography on the machine based on evidence in the registry. And he said, no, I examined the image, and there was none of that in the registry. He said, I know what you did. You used FTK Imager, right? You used this. You didn't read this box. You were the one watching porn. That was your examination machine with the porn on it. That was your machine you took an image of, not the evidence. So be aware of this box. Now, I'm taking an image of this machine right here. That's what I want to do. But uh, it's easy. that's why that's important. So I'm ready for that, and I need to put it somewhere. So I'm going to go, see on my desktop. And I'm going to make a new folder. I'll call it Reg2, because I already have an old one there. All right. And, uh, hmm, that's interesting. It didn't seem to change the name here. What did I do wrong? Uh, desktop. All right. Oh, I see. I guess I, I guess got to rename it here. I'm a little confused about this nonsense. Reg2. Okay, now I have to click it, I guess. Hmm. There, okay. That was a confusing, gooey situation, but now I'm finally going to Reg2. Okay, now I can hit OK, and there it goes. It's not going to take long. The registry is not that big. Um, it's not like imaging the hard drive or anything. And so that's going to do it. Now, if you open that folder and look in there, you might not see anything. This Microsoft hides this stuff from you by default. Microsoft loves to hide stuff. So you have to go to View and um, choose what to show. And uh, I'm showing hidden items and hidden system files. Now, there used to be a thing called Folder Options. And let me see if I gave instructions here how to find it. Microsoft keeps hiding all the good stuff and moving it around. Um, so you see this. Uh, all right, these are the Hive files. Yeah, showing system files. View options. 
view tab show hidden files. That's what I want in hide protected operating system files. Let me see where they're hiding it now. On the view, uh, I guess they've moved. This is Windows 11 now, I think. They've hidden it again. Uh, view, show hidden in folder options, by, folder options are gone. Oh, I call it options instead of folder options, okay. This, they do this all the time. Uh, this is why I hate Windows, I only use, they're still, now they took away the options entirely. Um, and hit it somewhere else. Uh, right. Uh, details, tile, content. Um, hmm. All right. Maybe here. Yeah. Options. Ah, uh, here we are. Three dots and options. Okay. They're always hiding. They finally get back to the, all these boxes are the same, but Microsoft hides them. What I'm starting to do is learning the command line to put in the command prompt to get to these boxes because Microsoft hides the path to them. It's a crazy company. They have whole departments just to hide everything so you can't get your work done. Anyway, now we can turn on this stuff. And so I want um, show uh, hidden system files, should be in here somewhere. Um, hide protected operating system files, I've turned it off. Okay, and show hidden files, there we are, that's what you want. There's hidden files and there's protected system files and you want to show all of it and then you can see the evidence you got here. So here's the uh, hives that take effect before you log in. Here's the users, and now there's only two users in this machine, the default account, which is the one used to create new users, and student. If you go in there, here's the ntuser.dat. There's also userclass.dat, which contains the association between um, three-letter file extensions and programs, and that's usually not that important. NT, the ntuser.dat is the one that's mainly important. So that shows that I did successfully capture the registry files I need, and now we can examine this stuff in um, autopsy. So we just need to do logical files. So let's get autopsy going. All right. and make a new case. I'll call it Reg2. Next, and finish. I don't care about any of this. All right, now it'll take 20 or 30 seconds to create the empty container to put the case in. That's going, I'm going to check the instructions. So it's logical files, and then you go to the folder, select, and then just next, next, finish. Okay. Host name, I want logical files which are here. Okay. And now I can add uh, desktop reg2 there. All right. And then next, and uh, I don't really care. I guess checking everything is harmless. And then finish. All right. And down here you can see it's starting in jest. And this will crawl across. All right. And let me take a look at my uh, pictures here to see what we're going. Okay, now we're going to use the registry viewer. So we dig down to registry, and we're going to start with IE users ntuser.dat. Okay. So we dig through here, um, data sources, logical file set, logical file set. There's reg2, so there's the good stuff. And uh, all right, users and student. So if I go in there, I will find ntuser.dat. And when you click it, it used to take separate tools to look inside here, but now it gives you 
not the whole registry, but the part of the registry stored here, displayed here just like you might see in a regedit. So now you can just examine this forensic image you took um, as if you were looking at a live registry. And so um, down here, if we go to user assist is good stuff. Let's take a look at the user assist, which is in, um, uh, there we are. Okay, root software, Microsoft Windows current version explorer. So it is software, Microsoft Windows current version. Okay. Windows, current version, Explorer, user assist. Now, Explorer is not Internet Explorer. It is Windows Explorer that lets you see that it draws the desktop and such. And user assist is a place that records what you've been opening with these long GUID numbers. And if you expand these things, they have a count, and we want to find one that has a count that's not zero. And so uh, you can tell when you click the count, it'll show you on the right what the uh, number of values is. So if I look at this one, number of counts, the count on that one is zero. And I'm going to expand this to make it easier for people to see. All right, this one is also zero. This one is also zero. I've got to find one that's not zero. And there will be one that's not zero somewhere. Ah, okay, this one has 84. All right, and notice, here's what you get. You have this gibberish here. This is Microsoft's idea of preserving your privacy. This is obfuscated with ROT13. Um, so you just have to move these things, 13 letters in the alphabet, and get them out. And it only encrypted the letters, not the numbers. So these are the names of programs that have been launched and uh, you can find them like uh, this is going to be a registry key. That's a four letter registry. And uh, this is going to be, uh, let's take this ZFB and you can reverse it various ways. I think I put a link here to a ROT13 reverser. Let me shrink this down so I can see what I'm doing. Control minus, there we are. All right. Um, oh, and I just, Oh, okay. That one I just asked for a flag there, but you can in fact reverse them. In fact, let me find a ROT13 reverser. You can do it a lot of ways. ROT13 decoder, sure. All right. There we go. All right. So let me, uh, let's get this one. ZVPEB. That's Microsoft, starting to try out Microsoft. So that's going to be Microsoft Internet Explorer or something. And that's what you see. So that's the, um, the user assist. And I thought I had some other ones here to show you, but maybe user assist is the only remaining flag. I used to look at a lot of other things in here, but a lot of them were not present in the modern versions of Windows. And a lot of them were not easy to do in this environment. Like um, the, for example, USB sticks. Every USB stick you plugged in is recorded, the exact serial number, the time it was plugged in and stuff, and that's quite useful. But like I said, it's hard to make a virtual USB for a virtual machine. It's hard to make sure students have USBs. Uh, you can also find the time zone in here and things like that. But for this project, I just did user assist. So that's how you get the registry. And we'll talk in uh, future classes more about the kind of evidence you're going to find in the registry. So let me stop this recording.